Hello everybody, Bill McCabe here at the Iron Crane Dojo, and we're taking a break in class right now. And I thought I would expand on something we talked about recently as pertains to establishing a flowing type of call and response movement with Kane. And what we talked about one or two videos ago was this. Terry's going to assist. Uh, Terry's over here, and she attacks. And this is the flow drill. She attacks, I block, counter, block, counter, block, counter, block, counter, block, counter, block, counter. Okay. Now we explained that in detail in a previous video, and then I had a couple of responses uh, about whether that could be expanded to other types of movement. And, and the answer is yes, but I, I need to tell you something. That most of the people who do the flow drill rarely go beyond that 10 step sequence that you saw there. Okay, so uh, a lot of people are satisfied using just that uh, as a foundation for their instinctive response for their entire martial arts lives. Uh, but in fact, whenever you have a two person drill uh, that's practiced one way, you can always practice the opposite way. So for example, we're here, each of us holding the stick in our right hand. Okay, so we can immediately switch and the material will go over here. We'll get to the opposite side. So now the sticks are in our left hand. And she comes over the top, there's the block. The counter, strike, over, top, shine. So that's the left or opposing side. Now, in my own practice, I generally try to develop everything on the left side to be the near equivalent of everything on the right side. So I can do most everything both ways. A lot of people that I work with cannot, so uh, I don't always have the opportunity to work that way with others. But with my senior students, I certainly do. Now, whenever you have a two-part exercise, that's oriented one way, you stick in right hands, you can orient it the opposing way, you stick in left hands, then you can orient the cross paths. So what I'm saying there is whenever you have an exercise uh, where the, each person is mirroring the other, there are four permutations of that exercise. And you just need to remember that as a rule so that when you're working on an exercise, where you're uh, doing the same thing as your partner, there are four ways to vary that and for you to explore different possibilities of movement. So here, uh, the next uh, permutation of this, this will be uh, number three, would be if Terry puts her stick in her left hand and I hold my stick in my right hand and she does the overhead attack. Now she's doing basically the same attacks, and I'm doing basically the same responses, but it changes the layout of the form. see how it still works though and it's still uh, and, you, and by the way because it still works you can also see why some people never go beyond the right hand only version of it because they're able to modify it on the fly to suit just about every situation but I, I think you need to, to practice it always so that you can identify where the gates open and where they close and you can shut them down at will when you have to but I want to show you in one of the subtle ways the drill can change uh, and, and that you, you might want to explore uh, 
conceptually, just so you have an idea of how things can change on the fly, and how you have to modify your own response to do what is correct to protect your uh, self-defense capacity. So she comes over the top with her left hand. I react. I counter. She blocks counters. One difference is here. As she, as she cuts from this side, you might recall in the right hand drill she was cutting this way. As she cuts this side, I have to block and clear. Because if I simply block and hold my position, I'll be blocking her stick into me. So I block and clear, and then I come back. And she responds and she blocks me. Okay, and, and we're back to, to the norm here. I strike, she comes around. I block, I counter. Now I'm going to show you one of the points of distinction. If I do a chicken wing block here, I actually let me, if I do a golf uh, block and counter, I'm on the opposite side of her body. And she has to change her block. If I was doing the, the uh, original block, she comes in and block here and I strike here, she's doing the chicken wing block. If I do the golf swing block, I'm responding on the opposite side of her body. And she has to react on the fly and do a crowning type of block or a hirata block. And then she downs and encounters and we're back to the flow. So she comes in. So here she's going to the outside. Uh, if she blocked differently, uh, if she was here and I came in and she did chicken wing block, she would strike over here. I'd have to respond like that. Okay? So the subtle differences that cause slight adjustments in your flow that may seem small but have huge implication uh, in developing your own self-defense system in a flowing dynamic. Okay, and then the final version of this would be if she went back to right hand. I switch to left hand. Okay, so she comes over the top, block, counter, strike, in, and block. Over the top, strike, in, back, over, over the top. You get the idea. Whenever you have a set of threads, twist them, turn them, spin them, uh, weave them any way that you can, see what it looks like at the end, then decide if it has value or merit for you, and you will progress in your martial arts. Okay? Things to think about, ways of experimenting to get new ideas, new paths, uh, keeps you from getting bored. Stay well, do well, see you down the line.